Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much, first off, for everyone who subscribes to my channel. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in filmmaking, being creative, music, stuff like that, art, then this is the channel for you. I think this year I'm really going to be putting the pedal down to the floor and trying to be, you know, the most honest I can on this channel. Let's just talk quickly about, oh my gosh. Hey guys, what's going on? I wanna, hey, what's going on? I wanted to make a YouTube video basically talking about creativity, filmmaking, music, etc. All the things that I love to dabble in. And I also want to talk about, you know, my struggles, my insecurities and stuff like that as, as a filmmaker and as a creative. Um, so that's basically what this video is gonna be about. So I'm kind of, kind of gonna be rambling on here, but this is more helpful for me to watch back and learn about myself. But let's talk about YouTube first and foremost. I think that YouTube and other places like YouTube where you can create your own channel and put your own stuff out without anybody, you know, putting their hands on it and telling you what to do, you pretty much have free reign. Um, I know that some people get canceled and stuff like that, but I think as far as it goes for filmmakers like me right now, you know, it's pretty safe, but <laughs> knock on wood. But so far, I really believe that places like YouTube are gonna be the future for filmmakers, creatives, artists, musicians. Um, it's a, a platform where you can put your own ideas out there. Now, when I look back on the base, almost three years now since I started this channel, I really was hoping to have at least you know 50,000 subscribers, but honestly, I don't think my content deserves that kind of viewership. Um, a lot of videos I've made are basically self self amplifying videos. You know, me trying to pump myself up to something I'm not. Uh, me trying to be somebody else that I'm not. You know making a video for all the wrong reasons. And then there's a few videos that I've had that have actually done fairly good on this channel. Um, my GoPro video about how it changed the industry. That was an honest video and it's done really well. My how to make a commercial with any iPhone video, that's doing really well. So, and that video came from the heart. It was honest and it had some really great advice in it. So those are the types of videos that are doing well. The ones that I'm have been honest about. And the other videos that aren't doing well are videos that just are lazy and full of just ballooned up versions of Sasha. And I just don't wanna do that anymore. You know, moving forward, um, I'm 37 this year, which is hard to believe. Talk a little bit about my early life. Um, Ever since I was a kid, me and my siblings, we'd make films and movies, and originally I thought I wanted to be an actor, and I was in theater and drama class and stuff like that, and I really loved performing. Um, and I think that's why YouTube works so well for me, is I really do like being in front of the camera. But, um, you know, as I got into my teen years, I had to figure out how to make a living, and after high school, I did about a year of stand-up comedy. I thought I wanted to be a stand-up comic, and a whole year of trying to do stand-up comedy. I learned a lot, getting booed off stage, stuff like that, and I realized I didn't really want to be a stand-up comic anymore. But I still knew I loved to perform, and I thought, well, maybe I could get into film work. And I knew I didn't have the grades. I was a terrible student in high school. I knew I didn't have the grades to get into university or college to a film program, so I went to a broadcast school for a year and a half in, in Detroit, Michigan called Spex Howard School of Broadcast Arts. And basically they let anybody in. Great school, by the way. You learn the basics of lighting, editing, and camera work and stuff like that. But it's really news oriented um, videography and stuff like that. So, but it really taught me kind of run and gun filmmaking and which is kind of interesting how I do mainly documentaries now. But after that, I wasn't able to get a job, and that was in like 2005. So after 
2005, 2006. I couldn't get a job in broadcast, so I joined a band because I was kind of a musician. And I played in a band called Mishu for about five years or so, a little longer than that. And that brought me up till about 2011, 2012. And, you know, the band did fairly well. We got on some TV stuff like much music and on the radio a little bit and uh, we all thought we were going to be famous musicians but that did not happen and in about 2011 2012 the band broke up and i had to figure out what i was going to do for a living i did a bunch of odd jobs like working at pizza places construction sites things like that and i think i was i must have been like 26 or 27 at that point and I finally said, screw this. I quit those crappy jobs, saved up enough money. My parents lent me some money too to buy some camera equipment and I started a videography company and I gave the whole video thing another chance and I actually started making money doing local commercials and that's how I met some documentary filmmakers uh, that were doing a film here in Windsor and they let me on their film and kind of the rest is history. Ever since about 2000, I, uh, I guess 2014, 2015 is when I first started doing documentary uh, up until now. So I've been doing corporate commercial work for local businesses and I've been doing documentary work and I've worked for places like Vice, CBC, TVO, Bravo Fact, um, E1. Um, I got something coming out on Crave that I was one of the DPs for. So that's gonna be really exciting and you know, even though I've done all this work with amazing broadcasters, I've kind of had these, I've had this life where I've really tried everything I've wanted to do. You know, I thought I wanted to be a comedian, so I tried that. I thought I wanted to be an actor, so I tried that. I thought I wanted to do, you know, videography and news, I, I tried that. I thought I wanted to be a musician, I tried that. And here I am back at making films and still being creative. But, you know, I've kind of hit a roadblock in the last, I don't know, since COVID, I swear. Um, ever since the last two years, um, I just don't know. I feel like I've lost my way in terms of who I am and trusting in myself and the types of projects that I want to do. And it's a real hard balance knowing that if you're going to want to do the things that you want to do, you're going to have to take a hit financially at first, I believe, because you're probably not going to get paid right away. Some people are luckier than others and they get projects approved, but um, today's a different world and it's it's a whole different, um, here in Canada at least, it's hard to get funding. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on and uh, basically I just don't see my future in broadcast. I see my future online, on the internet and It's, it's a little scary because I make all my money in broadcast essentially and I just I can I can't see the future in that. I don't I don't know in the next five or ten years if that's really even gonna be a thing. I mean people don't watch the news like they used to. Everybody watches YouTube and things like that. So I just really wanna start investing in that. And that was the whole reason why I started the YouTube channel is because I wanted to start transitioning over to just doing things on YouTube. So, but I think my biggest problem is just being honest on camera. And the last almost two to three years of doing YouTube has been me basically setting up these lights, getting in front of the camera and trying different ideas. And, you know, I have to say the best thing that's come from this three year process of being on YouTube is stripping of my ego um, and my struggles and my insecurities. It's being in front of the camera and talking about yourself and talking about the things that you do for a living, like film, um, it just has a way of wearing you down in a good way, I believe. And I think that my best work is yet to come on this channel because I really do believe that maybe finding different ways of getting money, maybe from corporate sponsorships and stuff like that to make the films that I wanna make, the creative endeavors that I wanna make, and putting them out on YouTube for less money and not going to the broadcasters, I think that might be more f fulfilling for me creatively. And also, I think I can make a living just doing that. 
Um, I really believe if you want to do something, you should go out and try it. Now, it doesn't mean you're gonna be successful. I think you should believe that you're gonna be successful, but you know, I'm 37 and I've tried a lot of things and I've failed at a lot of things. And this documentary film work and corporate videography is the only thing that I've really succeeded at financially and creatively. And now being 37, I need to figure out not just to be successfully successful financially and somewhat satisfied creatively, I need to be satisfied creatively fully, if that makes any sense. I don't know if I worded that right, but I just don't want to compromise for the wrong reasons. I want to do projects, and not in a selfish way, I want to do projects that engage my mind and my heart, like the things that really, that I'm really curious about. These are the projects I want to make, and the if I want to do that, the struggle is going to be how to monetize that. And if I monetize that, not letting that monetization, that money corrupt the pure creativity and the thing that I want to do. So that's the struggle. And I just haven't found my way through that yet. You know, I'm married, I have two kids, I have a mortgage. I'm not strapped financially. We're, we're good with our finances, but you know, I'm not rolling around in money and like Scrooge McDuck jumping into a big bank vault full of golden coins. Um, I'm, I have a modest life. You know, I'll be candid with you guys. The most money I've ever made was just over a hundred thousand dollars. And I believe that was in 2019 was my best year. Um, when I made just over a hundred thousand dollars and that was a big deal for me, you know, to make a hundred K as a documentary filmmaker for hire as a DP sound editor, Ex drone guy, you know, and doing corporate commercial work. That was a big deal for me. Um, I just got a notification, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I wanna talk now quickly just about um, my insecurities and stuff like that and my struggles. I'm sure you guys can relate. We're all human, but I think being real on this channel, it's not necessary for me to tell you guys everything about you know, my struggles, but <laughs> I think it's important for myself and I think it's important for this channel. You know, if people wanna to subscribe to this channel, they want the real me. And for me to create good art, I have to do and share myself with you guys, the true self. And I wanna do that starting from this video moving forward. Try to give you guys lighting tutorials, camera tutorials, editing tutorials, you know, documentary, filmmaking tutorials, corporate video tutorials, life tutorials, creative tutorials, art tutorials. I, I wanna just do videos that excite me and hopefully excite you guys too, so. But back to me being honest about my struggles <laughs> as a human being. You know, I find myself, let's start with jealousy. I'm jealous of a lot of people. I look at filmmakers like on YouTube, like Mark Bone, uh, incredible documentary filmmaker, started YouTube a year before me, and you know he's got over 200,000 subscribers, and uh, I'm super jealous of that. I'm jealous of the fact that he gets to make the films that he wants to make. I'm jealous of the fact that he does the YouTube videos that he wants to do, and you know, um, And it's not just Mark Bone, it's a bunch of other YouTubers or filmmakers and stuff like that. I'm just jealous of them, I'm jealous. Oh my gosh, they're so, they're, they're, such, they're so much better at doing lighting, they're so much better at doing sound, they're so much better at editing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the list goes on and on about my jealousies. And I think just sharing that with you guys that I'm jealous too of other people, kind of accepting the fact that I'm not perfect. I think that's kind of helpful. I hope it's helpful for you guys. It's helpful for me to hear out loud, you know, just admitting that is a big deal for me. Um, also, I'm a very insecure, I think I'm, I have a lot of, ins I don't know if I'm a very insecure person, but I have insecurities. You know, I, I have a chip on my shoulder. I didn't do well in school. Um, you know, I always question my intelligence. You know, am I not smart enough to work with these people or on this project? And uh, in my, in my office here, I have posters of films that I've been a part of and um, I, Part of me has them hung up 
because it's a reminder of the things that I've done and that's a good thing. And then another part of me is the insecure part of me that's just like, yeah, here's what I've done and this is proof that I've done it and now you, now you have to call me a professional. And, um, you know, it's kind of bullshit. And I just want to let that go. Um, I don't want to, you know, we all say we don't want to prove, t we all say we don't want to care what other people think, but let's face it, we do. Sometimes, some days we care more about what other people think than other days, but I definitely care about what people think. I mean, that's this is the business of audiences and stuff, and I want to let that go, but I don't know if you can let it go completely. I think caring what other pe people think to some degree is normal and healthy, but I think when it overtakes your your person and your creativity and it starts to affect the way you operate and create things, I think then it becomes a bad thing. And for me, trying to prove to people that I am a professional is not a good thing. And I think trying to prove to people that um, you know, here's my film and I really believe in it. Come take a look at it. Like standing beside my work and saying, this is good and you should watch it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that kind of pride. But, um, you know, me trying to prove that I'm not an idiot essentially is just not good for me. And um, I don't know how long that's gonna take to let go. I'm hoping admitting this to you guys, my, my subscribers, that um, that'll be part of that journey of letting go of that. But um, lastly, I kind of want to talk about me as a filmmaker. I don't, I don't think I want to be called a filmmaker anymore. I mean, maybe I'm a filmmaker, uh, but also a musician and also an artist. I'm all of those things, you know, I'm a creative person, but I'm also a hands-on person. I, I'm good with building things and constructing things and using my mind to create things physical and, uh, uh, artistically uh, so I just and it's not that I don't want to have a label on what I do I just don't care about it you know I think if I have an idea that needs to be said in film then I should be a filmmaker for that time and if I have an idea that needs to be said in a song then I should be a songwriter at that time and if I have an idea that needs to be put on a canvas then I should be an artist at that time um, I don't want to hold myself too strongly to this whole filmmaker thing and because uh, it's really not true. It's not really who it, I am. You know, I'm a lot of different things and filmmaker is one of them. Um, you know, I think in conclusion here, I just want to end with my favorite thing to do in film is setting up the lights, capturing something unique on camera getting back to the edit suite, putting that together with some original music and creating a small story, a, a story, and putting that out there and uh, sharing it with people. I really do enjoy that process. And that's a reason for me to stay in this business and basically not give up. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say. Uh, I don't want this video to be kind of like a sad video. I, I think this is really, hopeful and happy um, in some way. I mean, it's a little depressing because I'm talking about the things that uh, I struggle with, but you know, I'm hoping a lot of you guys can relate to it. Um, hoping you guys share in the comments your what you guys think. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to making some really cool videos, documentaries, music, art on this channel. And uh, thank you for joining the ride. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, creating and sharing that with you guys. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Such a long pause.